The Alric McKenzie Show starts right now. Being a man to me means doing whatever it takes to take care of my family. No chore is out of bounds. I am Charles Hyatt, and I'm a proud stay-at-home dad. The Alric Show, inspiration, motivation. One vision, hope to one new generation. Together we can live and learn. Yes, we're one family. Being a stay-at-home dad in Jamaica is not a story that we hear very often and Charles Hyatt is here with us. Charles, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, right. thank nice you. Nice to meet you, sir. Same here. Right, bro. and thank you for being a part of our show. My pleasure. All right, what is it like being a stay-at-home dad? Well, hard work, but it's rewarding. Hard work and yeah. it's rewarding. Yes, sir. All right, we're going to delve a little bit into it, but first, let me get to understand exactly um, tell me about your family um, while growing up. What was that setting like? Oh, wow, my family while growing up. Well, I lived in a very um, alive house. Mm -hmm. We all were loud and very creative. Mm -hmm. So um, we didn't have toys. We made our toys. And so my favorite toy was um, what was in abundance at the time, mud. And oh, I played a lot in mud. Right, so right, I made so, mud cake and all these things. Th wow, that's it. That's it. So, <laughs> so I did a lot of mud cake, but my my father didn't didn't like it as much because I kept on eating it. Right. Um, you go as far as eating yeah. No, you know you, you missed out on a lot because <laughs> right. right. the double layer mud on top of mud is just it's amazing. So great. But the the house was was full of jokes and full of fun. Uh, my mother was the um, head curator at the, at the um, National Gallery mm -hmm. and uh, my father was a thespian and a broadcaster and such. So it was a lot of creativity flowing around in the house. Right. And we can imagine um, Charles Hyatt, your father, Charles Hyatt Sr. Yes. I mean, he was in the public. Um, yes. He's a public figure. Yes. Right. Tell me a little bit about um, dad and how and, and describe him as a father. Okay, so dad and father, two different things. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, dad was fun and we laugh, we joke with this father, disciplinarian. Um, him never run joke. Once he said so something had to be done, it had to be done or there's gonna be discipline on the spot regardless of where you are. I just saw him stay. Oh, just we got the jokes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You saw him as Mr. Jokey Jokey, right. but I saw him very serious, right. you know. Even when he was performing, I would be like, should I be laughing? <laughs> is, that, is that my cue? Yes. You know, but um, he taught us experiential learning. Mm. So instead of sitting down and saying one on one is two and two and two is four, he taught us how to experience learning, mm. how to live learning. Um, because he grew up on the street. I don't know how many people know this. He was an orphan at, um, at the age of 13 and lived on the street and basically brought himself up. So he learned by doing. Right. And so he taught us how to have first common sense and two, how to know and use your environment. And so that's what I'm trying to pass on to my, to my boys. And that's one of the reasons why being a stay at home dad is so important to me. Because having the hands on, having the access to my boys at all times is very important to me. All right, um, as, as a young man growing up or as a child, what are some of the things that you did around the home and such as the chores that you would have to do, um, to, that you would have to well, tell you to do those things or not even tell you, but you were taught? Well, I um, grew up for the first part of my life with, with daddy and mommy. And then we, mommy, myself and my sisters migrated to the United States. Uh -huh. So when it came to chores that was in the United States, because I was young um, when Jamaica. I was in Jamaica. And when I went to the United States, um, we did everything. So whether it was washing, cooking, or cleaning, we had it all because it was my mother and the three of us, right? right? And um, that was actually my grandmother, Iris, also. So there was no helper. There was no any kind, we had to do it all. And my mother was by herself as a single parent, and um, we just had to take up responsibility. Right. Now, as a stay-at-home dad, you say it's hard work. Yeah, man. What makes it hard? Cleaning and ironing and washing and cooking and everything. It is hard work. Because, you see, 
it's one thing to have an empty house and everything is in place and something. But when you start adding children to it, um, there's always a mess. There's always some stuff, stuff tucked somewhere. There's always something to be cleaned, always something to be moved back to where it's supposed to be and such. And it's a continuous um, schedule of doing these things to keep up, to make sure that the house is in order. What made you make the decision to be a stay-at-home dad? So uh, the decision was given to me um, by the divine, by God, right? Yes. I went up on this roof with a chair and I had a one-on-one -on -one with God. At the end of it, he put me to sleep. And in that dream, I heard very clearly, you must now resign and do what I told you to do. You are now mine, and I'm gonna use you for what I want you to use you for. So I woke up, and like I said, it was like he was sitting right there talking to me. I woke up, climbed down, said to um, Judith, I have to resign. And she said, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, whoa, yeah, whoa, because wait, wait. I'm thinking now. <laughs> you know, let's, let's pray about it. And I said, okay, let's pray. And she heard the same answer that, that I got. And that for me, obviously that was confirmation. And I wrote the resignation letter right then and there. What I was sure of is that I want to live a life of obedience. So my next step, even if over the cliff, if it is instructed by the Holy Spirit, it's going to be taken. All right, we take a break. When we come back, Charles tells us more about being a stay-at-home dad, his wife Judith, and their marriage. Charles and Judith tied the knot on June 19, 2009. They have two boys, Charles and Daniel. Tell me about Charles and Daniel, in which year they came in the picture? Uh, 2010 is when we started and then the next one came in 2012. Um, so uh, Charles and Daniel, two dynamic boys, right? So Daniel is the creative um, comedian, mm -hmm. whereas Charles is the creative performer. Oh, right. okay. Uh, so one creates and one performs. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. So, okay. th well, they both create. Huh? Uh -huh. Um, one is more by rote, so mm -hmm. he will see a script and memorize it um, by, by picture memory, which gets, he gets from his grandfather. What was it like when you met Judith for the first time? How do you remember that? Boy, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. um, I was working for the United States Peace Corps in Washington, D.C. and um, designed and was coming to implement a, their new network at the Peace Corps office here in, in, in Jamaica. Uh -huh. And I walked into this office and there was this woman, uh -huh. if you can imagine, an Afro about this, pulled back, looking radiant. And I looked and something said to me, hey, your wife, that you know, brother. And I left it alone. Of course, you know, we rap and we talk and we got the servers in. And um, one day I said to her, have you ever been to Strawberry Hill? Like, you know, she's in, she lives in Jamaica. All right. So she says, yeah, I've been. I said, well, would you like to go? We, you know, let's go and have some dinner. She said, okay. We spent, hmm, I think we got there around eight o'clock. We left around 8 o'clock the next morning mm -hmm. and all we did was talk in the pool, by the pool. We spoke the whole night through. It was amazing. Wow. We spoke the whole night through. While I was still in the States, we became friends. Right. And um, then I came back and what, what am I waiting for? You know, I came back in 2008. I decided to co move home in 2008. And um, we got married in 2009. Help me to understand a little bit more of your role in the home. What exactly a typical day looks like? All right, so that's two different questions. Role in the home, there's no such thing. 
Mm. Our family is liquid. So whatever needs to be done, we do it. If I cook, Judith wash up the dishes. If Judith cook, I wash up the dishes. If I get up early, I do the breakfast. If she get up early, she does the breakfast. If she, she loves, she has therapy of going to the market, right? So on Saturday morning, she goes to the market. That's, that's her therapy. And while she's at the market, I'm cooking and getting breakfast ready. And so that when she comes home, she has breakfast ready, right? She has breakfast to be eaten and the boys are, are ready. And, you know, so in the mornings, I get the boys ready for school and she gets, you know, it's, it's very, very fluid. Why is it important for you to to have this liquid um, kind of relationship. Because I'm raising men. I'm raising heads of households. And I know what works in my household. And I know, growing up around all women, I know what women appreciate as far as in a household, as far as taking care of a home. And I want to make sure that I'm doing my part. And it's not even, it's not even doing my part. It's something I enjoy doing. Because my job as father as husband right. is to make sure there's balance in my home, right? So I can't come home and say, I want some dinner, you know, go cook and all them things. No, that's, that's not, that doesn't make any sense. Because if I, even if I come home after Judith and I say that Judith is wiped out, me go cook. Why not? If she's wiped out, I go pick up her foot and I rub her foot. Do you think that if more men should, should, should take on a lot more in the home, or, or, or to just have this liquid kind of style in, 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 their, in their home, it will help to make the home a, a, a happier home. I find that a lot more men are taking on these roles. And it's not, it's not like I said, it's not a role. Right. A man will cook. A man will... It's just a part of living. It's, it's, it's just a, a lifestyle. Because yeah, if just you want to eat, go cook. Yeah, exactly. exactly. If you want clean clothes, go wash. Exactly. Well, or wash too. Exactly. It's just a part. It's, it's about surviving in a happy home right right if you do that you've got it right now does that mean that we don't have arguments does that mean we don't we, sometimes we don't you know that everything is hunky-dory no it doesn't mean that right. we have arguments and sometimes we might argue in front of the kids but we let the kids know said look this is big people business and this is what big people do sometimes because we're a very matter-of-fact home mm -hmm. we don't hide anything from the children Right. right. I will bring a bill and I will say, look here. Hmm. You see this? This have to go down. Because this is daddy's salary, this is mommy's salary. And even though they're five and six, they're learning addition and subtraction. So they must be able to take away one from one and two from two and understand. Say, so, yeah, don't play with the water so long because the water bill is now high. Right. And they will remind us sometimes, Daddy, your water in that plant too long. <laughs> You know, it's been too long. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, what's a typical day um, for you at home? Um, so we drop off the kids together. And I come home, and usually I go around and just try to tidy the house. Look at it. Um, I, I, I want to jump onto Good News Jamaica and see if I can get some articles done and at least schedule them to go out. Once that happens, I then do laundry because there's always laundry in the house. Um, well, two boys, yeah? Just trust me. <laughs> They put on a shirt in the morning, take it off, throw it in the laundry. You understand? If, even if I say, when you come home, put on the same shirt, because you had it for 15 minutes. Yes, yeah, sure, daddy, laundry. And I find it in the laundry, and I'm just like, oh, Lord. But anyway, do the laundry, um, and again, try to make sure, so when they come home, they see the house in order, and I make sure they understand, say, look, look at the house. When mommy come in the house, the house have to look like this. Mm. Play all you want, bug out all you want, but understand you must clean up before mommy come home. It doesn't work all the time, right? Because like I said, we're fluid. So we might be having a great time and the house might look like a tornado hit it. But the fact is that we know that we have to put things back in order. Mm. All right, we take a break. When we come back, we talk more about being a father to your children. The Show. The Show. For Charles Hyatt, it is important to spend quality time with his family. Uh, Charles, what are some of the things that you do with your boys every day? <laughs> well, every day is a routine. We come home, change out the clothes and the homework, right? Um, uh, if Depending on when mommy is coming home, I might get the dinner ready and they'll eat dinner. What's your favorite meal? Um, hot. Hot? Yes. Or she likes her meals hot. Yeah. But sometimes Breakfast. I don't want to inflict that on my kids. Right. The whole Minasta menu. Right. 
-hmm. because the minister of menu is what they call daddy slop mm -hmm. and that is mackerel tuna um sardine with some ketchup and and spices and some <laughs> onion and, and and banana put in there yeah. and you do it all in a one pot mm -hmm. and you have that with bread oh cool yeah all in one yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's it then usually the night is very short because at seven o'clock it's devotion mm -hmm. then it's bedtime how do you discipline them first we try to do the um talking to right that doesn't work then we do the privileges being taken away that doesn't work well the bible says spare the rod spoil the child mm -hmm. and so we do spank in this house right. um we we try not to get to that and so we always let them know that look it's getting to that point you're filling up when it overflows you know what's coming right so let's try not to get to that point let's just work it out um, but sometimes, you know, you, you just have to take it to that point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Talk to your children. Help them to understand. Second, yeah, take man. away the privilege. Yeah, man. Privileges. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, um, corporal punishment as the first reaction is wrong. Right. Is wrong. Because there's so many things you can learn as to why that action was done. Right. You're in tune to Up Radio where we empower you continuously. This is the Empower Hour. Apart from um, being at home with your kids, spending quality time, mm -hmm. um, you also do uh, Good News Jamaica. You know you're in tune to the Empower Hour where you're gonna get just motivated from all angles. Stay tuned for the speeches, the excellent music, and just the vibe. This is Uncle Charlie once more. Tell me about Good News Jamaica. So Good News Jamaica is a online media uh, media house that does um, positive in information and imagery about Jamaica and Jamaicans around the world. The reason I, I separate the two is because there's so many natural things that are beautiful about Jamaica which brings people here and a lot of things that we don't know of like there's a, there's a falls called Kwame Falls um, mm -hmm. that you can have to hike 45 minutes to get to the falls. Kwame Falls? I've, Kwame never, falls. I've never heard about it. And if you go to see it, you'll be amazed. Wow. You'll be absolutely amazed. We have the first cardiovascular surgery simulation machine in the world. It was created here at UWE. Wow. Yeah, I mean, there's so many things about us that are dynamic and that, that it's our story that we need to hear. And it must be told. Right, and so we're not hearing all the greatness about us. Every day, um, there's a story that you put out. Absolutely, right. absolutely, um, and, and the stories vary. It's it's the full gamut. I, we we have three different tiers. We learn from the individual, we learn from corporate, and we learn from government. All the positive things. Wow. So you have been impacting lives, and you have been informing people um, around the world. Yes. Um, basically, how does yes. that make you feel now? It was my calling. It was what I was born to do. Um, I feel the greatest when I'm serving. And the best way for me to serve is to empower people. Are you truly happy that you handed in that resignation? There are two great things that I did in my life. The greatest above anything else that I've ever done is move home, right? And that's above getting married, that's above having children, that's above everything else. Moving home to Jamaica is the greatest thing I've ever done for myself. The second greatest thing is resigning and working for myself. Would you encourage more men to stay at home? Sure, if that's what, if that's what works for them, absolutely. Absolutely. It is, it, it is an exhilarating thing. When you, I mean, remember now, it's not just staying home and doing housework. I'm actually working also, right? right? Um, if a man wants to stay home and do housework, maybe his wife is, is making enough to, for them to be, be on one salary, I think that is absolutely wonderful. Mm. I see no problem with that. Charles is wonderful. The thing is that you know, I think society puts a, a coin it as a stay-at-home dad. I think that Charles is doing what 
fathers do. Fathers are supposed to do. Certainly, I grew up seeing my father, you know, being very, very involved in the home. In fact, I married my father, really, in terms of personalities. So, him being a responsible dad in the home is exactly what he's being. He's present. The boys are just overjoyed to have access to him all the time. I thank Charles for being as brave as he has continued to be. Charles is not a wuss of a man. He's all man. So for him to be at home and not, you know, bringing home that steady income is something that doesn't come very easy for him, but he steps up. And I'm very, very proud that I can stand anytime and say, I have a man in my house. He's a good man, he's a good father, a good husband. And I am thankful that I have a package that represents all of that. So thank you to my man husband, Charles. What are the words of encouragement do you have for men out there about taking care of their boys, taking care of their girls, taking care of the family? The thing is that you have to understand that you as an adult, you've lived you are now raising the next generation of people that you are going to depend on because once a man, twice a child, mm -hmm. don't it? So it is important for you to instill in them the qualities that they need to move this world to a better place. So think about that in your actions. When you do something, make sure it's empowering. Right. Because when you do something that is detracting, Remember, you're going to get the dividend. So make sure you empower because then empowerment will come back to you. It is a wonderful cycle. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Do you ever feel like you would uh, go back to a nine to five? Absolutely. But it has to be mine. My own. Thank you very much for sharing with us, yeah, Sir Charles. No problem. All right, and, we, and we wish you all the best with your family. Thank all you right? so much. And I think I'm going to try this stay-at-home business later. You definitely uh, should. It's <laughs> exhilarating. All right, great. We want to thank Charles Hyatt for sharing with us. Join us next week for another episode of The Eric Show.